that. Here we are back at my mean hive and I'm going to try once again to find the queen. Uh, if I find her, she's going to have a short life and then the, queen, the colony will get another queen in a week or two. So that's the plan. I'll give them a little bit of smoke here in the entrance. I should mention for those who saw my last video uh, about this queen or this hive that there were a lot of people concerned about what I was doing with the comb. That's right. Um, they were concerned about attractive, uh, attracting animal nuisances, specifically bears, raccoons, um, what else was mentioned, possums. Um, the thing I would say about that is you have to recognize that beekeeping is not only local, it's hyper-local. Everything depends on where you are and, uh, and what's, what's in your environment. We're probably 500 miles from the nearest black bear, um, even further from the nearest grizzly. So bears in this environment are not a concern. Uh, we could have raccoons. We could have um, armad uh, or not armadillos. Well, we could have armadillos. I don't think they care about bees. We could have uh, possums. Um, but I use a lay inside, which means that it's one body. It's big. It's heavy. Has an interest entrance guarded by a uh, a metal uh, hive gate. Um, I don't think a possum is going to be able to do any damage to this, nor could a raccoon. A raccoon might, if they were tall enough. A tall raccoon might try to try to get up and lift the lid off. I just don't think that's a risk. It's heavy. I don't think there's a problem. So, another thought that I thought I'd speak to in this video is after I did that, that video and was talking about how mean these bees are, I looked at the video and compared it to another one where I was learning some tips about how to deal with this and I thought, you know, compared to that, these bees are not um, all that mean. But the problem I have with these is when they're riled up, they follow me a long ways. They'll get in the car with me and I can't safely get out of the car until I've driven with windows down a quarter mile, half mile, a mile. Um, get all the bees out of the car and then I can get out and come out of my suit. And that's not like the other bees that I have and it's not a level of uh, aggression or defensiveness, if you prefer, that I'm willing to deal, deal with. They're not a dangerous hive in the sense that right now, you know, they were a little annoyed that I was puffing smoke at them. But I'm standing right in front of the entrance here and I'm not sure, I need to check my field of view on the camera. Yeah, I think that had me in, in the field. Uh, so I'm standing right here in front of the entrance and they're not flying out to get me. But they are defensive in that as soon as I open this lid, on, it, it, nowadays um, there's the frames touch across the top to make kind of a second lid. But as soon as I start pulling out frames, you're going to see they get a, a, on me in significant numbers and they follow me a long ways. So for me, um, they have gentled down some since I first got them. Um, and if that continues, uh, if, if let's say I don't find the queen today, and after some time uh, I still am not able to find the queen, and I don't have time to move on to the next step, then at that point um, I might decide that it's just as well to, uh, uh, to let them continue. And uh, I know in this area, uh, so in Texas, there are Africanized bees uh, plenty uh, in the uh, more rural parts of the state. We're in a suburban area uh, in the suburbs, suburbs of Austin. And so there's quite a few beekeepers in Hutto and Round Rock and nearby. And all of those beekeepers are probably raising docile colonies. And so when, the, when a queen goes out to be um, fertilized from this hive, 
even if she's got some uh, Africanized genes, she's likely to come back and the next generation are very likely to be less aggressive than, than the previous. And so I might just play it out just because we've got such gentle uh, genetics in the vicinity. All right, I tried opening up that first frame and it's very tight. And I think that lifting it up was breaking a lot of the comb. They are building too tight against each other here. So, now you see they're coming at me, which that's justifiable, I suppose. They're filling that out with honey. So this one, it has some brood, but apart from that, it wouldn't be a bad one to consider for harvesting. Uh, I would have to do crush and strain on it. But now what I want to do is check these other two closer to this end and see if they've got the same properties but without the, uh, without the brood. Let me give them a little more smoke. I've no that's the other thing I've noticed on these bees. They don't seem to respond much to smoke at all. Uh, it doesn't seem to do much to calm them, to dissuade them from flying. It does, sometimes I can get them to move off of a frame um, by using smoke, but other than that, they just really don't respond well to smoke. Yep, it's no wonder. When I tried to pull out that first frame, let me show you this one. They had cross-combed it Oh, I see. So they've built some sideways on this back wall. That's what's, that's what's going on. And then here, will you look at that? Oh my goodness, that's heavy. So th they built this in a week and the frame next to it in a week. It was one week ago today that I put this in there. And if that were solidly capped, I would take it today. But I'm not gonna be able to do that because it's, it's not dry. I would love to be able to just cut this out, straighten it up, give it back to him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this outside too, just to have the space to work. Oh, so what I was saying about hyper-local, uh, I was just dropping comb on the ground here. And um, I did reclaim that comb after they had uh, reclaimed the nectar from it. And so I've got all of that comb ready to go to the house with me uh, to be melted down. Here's the bottom part, and they once again made a mess at this end of the hive that I'm going to have to go in and clean up. And so it's probably going to be the case that I'm going to annoy some of, <laughs> some of you as I toss out some of this comb once again. Um, but it's because it's too wet to be harvested and I want the bees to be able to, uh, to reclaim the nectar and they will do it and they'll put it back in the next row of comb that they, that they build. Now this one looks intriguing. It's possible that I might be able to use crush and strain to harvest this one. We'll see if it's got brood on it. You see how the, oh, nope, I thought for a minute I saw the queen, but I don't think I did. So 
So we've got brood here, brood down here. This is honey. And this honey, I would be able to crush and strain. It's, it, enough of it is capped that I think that would be safe. But on this side, the brood goes up higher. Now, my primary objective on this inspection is to find the queen. Secondary is to find any frames that I can harvest. So I'm going to give a good careful look, especially since I thought that I momentarily saw her. Now, I've got a drawback here because this frame has a second layer on this back side. So she could be hiding down there. I'm wondering if I should cut that layer off. Maybe you can see it. See, we've got this second layer there and another one here. I would love to be able to just take this frame out of circulation because I think it arose from a crooked uh, a crooked set of um, cutout comb. All right, once again, I'm going to go down try to get this soft wet comb. I'm going to drop it out here. And then next time I'm here, I'll reclaim the wax to melt it down. But that way the bees will have had a chance to get the, uh, the nectar out of it. So if I don't find the queen today, Next steps will be to um, try possibly a shaker box or pro possibly um, splitting them into three, three different boxes. In fact, right now, that's what I'm leaning towards. Maybe I should start that today. I think I will. And at the very least, when I come back next week, um, I won't have to search through as many bees. So let me go get some nukes set up and we'll give that a try. Okay, I've got three boxes that have served as swarm traps. Like so. And uh, so those will let me put either five or six, I forget which right now, either five or six frames in each. Which, since that's a 14 frame hive, that will be plenty. And uh, what I'm going to be able to do is just separate these frames. Um, and then next time I look, I'll be able to look for eggs. And where I find eggs, I, I know I've got the queen. So I'm just going to start dividing them like that. I'm still going to look for the queen, but if I don't find her on a frame, the frame is going to go in one of these others. I don't have to be too discriminating about where I put the different types of frames because most of these frames have both brood and food on them, copious amounts of nectar or honey. So I can pretty much just separate 
one to one to one. And that's what I'm going to do here. Oh, I should look for the queen. There's so many bees here, it's hard to find a good spot to even hold it. I don't see her there. I don't see her there. So many bees. See a queen there. Don't see a queen there. could be here because here she's got room to lay. So I'll look carefully here on this one. immediately obvious. Most of the cells where brood is hatched out are being backfilled with honey. I'm watching for are queen cells. Haven't seen any of those. a little bit of smoke might have a little effect. She makes a move around, I guess. There's a bee somewhere that's found itself in close quarters that it doesn't like. Always makes me nervous. Oh, gotta be careful with that one.
lots of brood here, but not much space for a queen to lay in. I don't obviously see one. Good grief. It's just kind of overwhelming to see this many bees and have to... Oh, do I? Do I? Ah. I think it's a drone. Yeah, it's just a big old drone. That's seven removed, or seven placed in the nukes from the 14. I've got four more here and three more down here that I'll have to place. And then I'll try to get as many bees as possible out of this box. I'll set the entrance for this box to close to keep them from coming back to this box as home. Then I'll set all three of these hives up on top. So many bees. been experimenting with different styles of foundationless frames. This one has no support. That was just a mistake. I did not mean to put this in the box with no support. Uh, but they have it anchored pretty well to the sides. So it doesn't seem as flimsy as some of the others have been. Then I've got some that are horizontal where I've got a dowel that runs horizontally and that is the support um, and it seems to me so far that that doesn't work as well as the other frames where where I position the dowel vertically So many bees, so many, many bees. This hive came from a cutout from a water meter. I never envisioned that in two and a half months they'd be this strong. I thought I might have to kind of baby them along. <clears throat> All right, Queen, it would sure be nice if you'd show yourself. <coughs> Beekeeper's getting smoked out here.
Ooh. Just gets tiring. Standing here with all the it's a little nerve-wracking, even when you trust your gear. I've never been stung through this suit. I've been stung through my gloves a time or two. Well, I have been stung through the suit. I've been stung on the top of the head. That's why I have two layers of hats on. Um, and I've also, on one occasion, had bees find their way into the veil. Um, and I got stung behind the ear once. Somebody suggested that when I see drone brood, because they're aggressive, I should kill the drones, the, the drone brood. And I thought about that. I would do it, except I don't want to spend that much extra time on this hive, on this visit. That will be for another time. Okay, there were no frames in that that I thought were really ready to provide honey. Some were getting close, but none of them really ready there. Okay, I sure hope it doesn't prove that in my effort to solve one problem, I just created three more. That could be the case. All right, so I'm going to move the smoker out of the way. All right, we're
we're gonna got a couple of sticks here that I've used for keeping the divider board off the hive bottom. I hope that car that honked at me isn't trying to pull up here about it. I don't want to be here right now. out of there. I think instead of question is smoke first or dump first? I think I'm gonna dump first. I just want them out of this box. Taking a look to see if I can spot the queen here as I go. might have been the queen just before she got crushed so if that was her then I'll have an easier job next week I'll come back and be able to see if there are any any eggs laid or any swarm cells built if there are swarm cells or not swarm cells but queen cells built if there are queen cells built of the nukes. If there are no eggs in the nukes, then uh, I've got three queenless colonies. And what I can do at that point is to uh, introduce a queen, recombine the nukes, and go from there. So now both of the entrants are in the closed positions. About to put the lid on. Any bees that are still in will stay there for a week and they won't like that. And now stragglers and foragers will have to find themselves a home in one of these three. So let me start positioning them. Those are heavy. Here's one. Opening up that way. That's not going to work. Because there's not room for all three of these.
to face in a proper direction. Well, maybe there is. Let me see if I can make this work. One like so. been pretty. Well, I think it's going to be better for me to put them on the other level. So now I need to set these back down. Somebody told me working with a lay tire, you don't have to move heavy boxes. <laughs> I know there is truth to that. This demonstrates one of the exceptions. Good thing is this box is now empty, so it'll be easier to move. Hives. See how much they love me? Just a little space between them to put the lids on.
But I'm in the shade here. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it, I believe, for today. They're curious, and some of them are on the ground, and some of them are in the air. But they will find their way to these three entrances. And next week, I should know for sure which one has the queen, or, or maybe all of them are queenless. So, we'll catch you the next time. Thanks for watching.